Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining today. Uh, so this is the Drive Electric Week Engaging with Media webinar. Um, we're just going to wait a few more minutes while uh, more attendees join, and then we'll get started. Okay, uh, I think we're going to get started now. Um, Larissa, did you want to uh, kick it off? Yeah, definitely. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm going to present um, who our presenters are right now. Uh, you just heard from Kylie, who's with Plugin America. She's a program coordinator. Myself, I'm with Sierra Club. I'm a press secretary for our transportation campaign. Um, and we also have a couple of guest speakers we're going to be offering some personal experience using their, our tips and hopefully some additional tips that we didn't speak about. Um, we have James Reach, who's one of our NDU City Captains. He's the, an attorney in Oxnard, California, and also the transportation um, former transportation chairman of the Los Padres chapter of the Sierra Club. Um, in his role as the transportation chairman. He had an excellent promotion of events spanning several years that were very well attended by members of the public and volunteers displaying their own EVs um, and extensive media coverage, both before, during, and after the events. So I hope he should have some good, um, talking from some good experience. We also have Andrew Clark, who is an instructor at Cloud County Community College at Concordia, um, Kansas. Um, he considers himself a staple of the North Central Kansas EV movement since he had his first EV in 2015. Um, he said he started his illness, quote unquote, his words, <laughs> with the 2015 Chevy Volt, like many others. And then after that, it was a 2015 Ford Focus Electric and a 2016 Kia Soul EV before finally founding a good deal on a 19 Chevy Volt. Um, and then finally, we have Anna Cullen, who's the Director of External Relations and Communications for The Ray, which is a nonprofit organization and 18 mile living transportation lab on I 85 in West Georgia. And in that role, she's developed and grown the organization's communications capacity, including media relations, content development, website, and social media management. So that's everyone who'll be speaking to you today. Um, I'm going to kick it off with talking about securing earned media for your end of it um, and covering four things. So we currently have 250, 250 events being organized around the nation right now. Um, so that might mean that you're in competition for media coverage with other end events in your local community. And do gets a lot of local media coverage. That's the holy grail of it. Um, we get like hundreds and hundreds of hit every hits every year. So the important thing to ask yourself when you're promoting your event is to how to pitch it to make it stand out and what makes your event unique and to highlight that in all your cub and all your outreach and all your PR and media outreach before the event. Um, don't underestimate the power of local influencers such as public officials, celebrities, organizations and community leaders who can spread word of the event leading up to the event and then also draws reporters to cover your event because public officials are really big, big drawing. Um, partnering with them will help build your exposure 
And another really strong hook for media attention is using your event to announce new state or local efforts to expand EV adoption, um, whether that looks like displaying city fleet vehicles, making new proclamations, new program announcements under the Volkswagen settlement maybe. Um, you know, these events aren't existing in a vacuum right now, like transportation emissions are one of the, is the highest source of carbon emissions in the nation. And there's a lot of stuff happening on the federal level to attack our ability to, um, to, to mitigate that. And so I think ENDU is a great springboard for state and local officials to check out and promote EVs, EVs and announce pro EV policies and incentives to switch to clean transportation in their communities. And um, it's a good media hook. So, and then lastly, just share compelling local stories. I think that we can cite numbers and facts all day long about carbon reductions and about health benefits, about long-term savings. Um, and they're all, I have all those talking points. I can give in to you, they're important, but I think the thing that drives communications, strong communications is ultimately a compelling story. Um, if you need more information about media hooks or angles, depending on what's going on in your local community during Endu, or even like right before or right after, um, you can reach out to me. I'll have my email at the end of this presentation and I, I can help look over any potential pitches. Um, yeah, next slide, please. This just basically covers everything I just talked about in a really succinct way. It's just to get compelling media coverage. These are the boxes we need to check. Good branding, diversity of people at your events, um, a packed house, having some kind of ceremony, having an engaged crowd, um, which should happen naturally if it's a packed house, <laughs> and some kind of some form of entertainment. There's some form of um, ways to keep the kids entertained too. Next slide, please. All right. Um, so I think this is where I'll, uh, I'll step in. Um, so rules of engagement. Uh, some tips to remember when you engage with the media is to keep it local. Uh, about two weeks before the start of National Drive Electric Week, we will share local reporter contacts with you. Uh, but that information is not exhaustive. We do recommend you do your own research to connect with bloggers, reporters, and editors uh, that we may have missed in our research. Uh, and also, when you reach out to media, make sure you format your uh, message uh, properly. So use paragraphs where it makes sense, use proper punctu punctuation, consistent text size and font, um, especially if you copy paste something into the body of an email. Um, you still want to make it look nice because um, it makes you know, your event and yourself look very professional. Uh, we also recommend avoiding exclamation marks. Uh, you, you know, you don't want to, I guess, over exaggerate the uh, your events. Uh, you know, I'm sure you know. Just try to put content in there that is compelling on its own. Um, and also, uh, we recommend not CCing because of reporter competition. Um, so, you know, reporters don't want to see other reporters that you may have emailed the story to. Um, we just recommend emailing individually or using the BCC function. All right, uh, another tip is to keep your pitch short and simple and to the point. Uh, so you wanna highlight the best features of your event first. Uh, and also you can add pictures and highlights from previous years to show the scale of the event. You know, it's always good to get pictures with uh, a lot of people in it or just a really nice display of vehicles. Um, yeah, also if you had any local public officials attend in previous years, that's a great picture to add. Um, and also, we recommend that you email first and call second. Uh, also, you should allow a day or two in between to give reporters time to see your email message. All right, uh, so we do have a helpful guide for giving an interview and Larissa is going to share that now in the comment box. Um, so everyone on the right should see a control panel. And then there's a chat uh, drop down menu. And in that chat, uh, you'll be able to see links. Uh, and so you can copy that link and use it later um, or click now. Um, so we basically recommend the KISS rule when telling a story. Uh, and the idea is you keep it simple, easy to understand, and interesting. Uh, so you want to tell the story as if you're talking to an aunt or an uncle when you're doing an interview for TV. 
Also, be ready with positive facts about your event so that you can start the conversation with a strong positive statement. Um, so, you know, reporters are likely not going to know very much about electric vehicles and they're going to ask very common questions that non-EV drivers have about range and charging times. So you always want to stay positive and point out examples that show how affordable, fun, and easy it is to drive electric. For example, if a reporter asks about range, uh, you might want to talk about the many long-range EV options such as Tesla and the Chevy Bolt. Uh, you can also point out that many people are just fine with a range of 100 miles or less for their daily commute. Um, and also, you, know, you can point out that many people charge the car overnight in their home, as opposed to using this sort of gas station method where you're charging your car when you're out and about. Uh, it's also a good idea to practice with a friend the night before, uh, so you know how to answer any tough questions that might come your way. All right, uh, so the next tip is to make sure to assemble your team. It's really important to assign people's roles ahead of time. If reporters, officials, or special guests of any kind are attending or participating, uh, you really want to be prepared to guide them around the event and accommodate them in any way. Uh, you know, so show them all the, the features and entertainment of your event. Uh, maybe have some people set up that they can talk to who know a lot about, um, about the struggles of an EV driver in the area or uh, who are really involved in policy in the area, who might have some great suggestions for pro-EV policies. Also, uh, make sure that you have a table or, or make sure that the, any public officials have a table and access to attendees and volunteers that they're interested in talking to. Uh, finally, so you can also ask a reporter ahead of time uh, when you're assigning roles, you can ask a reporter ahead of time or in the morning if they want to speak with anyone in particular, and so you can arrange that the night before. Um, another important point about assigning roles is that you can assign people specific responsibility, like taking photos or posting on social media. And this is important because, you know, it's, it's really hard for one person to uh, keep track of everything that's going on, make sure everything's safe, and also be taking photos and posting on social media. And great photos are a really big uh, help for your event. Um, you can use them over and over again on social media um, to help promote your event the next year. All right, and then I'm gonna pass it over to Larissa. Hey again, y'all. Um, okay, so this slide is basically for those visual learners, um, a good timeline for the media outreach leading up to Endu. Um, if this looks overwhelming and it looks like you're bugging reporters, trust me, you're not. They're really busy and their <laughs> inboxes fill up quickly. So it's good to get stuff on their radar in advance, but it's also important to plug reminders as close to the day as possible. Um, so for three to four weeks out, which is around the time that we're at now, um, we recommend that you submit your event announcements to local calendars that advertise local public events, either this week or maybe early next week. Um, this is a good way to generate more people attending your event in general, which in turn will draw out media. Um, and then a calendar announcement is pretty much the same format as a media advisory, but the focus is more about public attendance, such as the fact that the event is free to the public, you can share your registration link on it, um, you can explain disability access, parking, directions, whereas a media advisory um, is doesn't have all that information and just has the stuff that the reporter needs to know. Um, so one week out, you'll send the media advisory out to local reporters, one to two days, you send it again um, in an email, BCC. Uh, you can do a pitch call one to two days out too, and then the day of call your news desks um, and send a press release, which these are all templates that we'll be providing y'all with. Um, next slide. Uh, you're not alone. Oh, I just said this. Sierra Club will provide all the city captains with specific media contacts for your state one to two weeks prior to the event. So um, like Kylie mentioned before, it's not an exhaustive list. But um, so you should do your own research with your own local media because, um, you know, we have we have events nationwide and that would be a really, really, really <laughs> lots of many, many hours of work. Um, 
but yeah, you're not alone in that. And we'll, I'll, I can help with any of that and you have my email at the end. Um, this is an example of what a media advisory looks like. It's a little bit blurry, but this is the general gist of it. It covers what, when, where, um, visuals and how in that order. Um, visuals are super important, so don't skip out on the including details here, depending on what your event looks like, whether it has a parade or a ride and drive, a celebrity speaker. Um, this is going to be key for TV news um, and how they're going to set want to set up their shots. Um, so yeah, this media advisor needs to be localized with specific information to each event, and then it ties each event into the larger national effort for context. Um, next slide. All right, and, and Larissa, just to cut in a little bit randomly here, um, I just want to remind everyone that if you have questions, um, you can type your question into, uh, there should be a control panel to the right of your screen, um, and there should be a drop-down menu for questions. And so if you have any questions, just type it in there, and I will answer it at the end of the webinar. Thank you for mentioning that, Kelly. I forgot to at the beginning. Same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so the day of the event. Um, these are just a checklist of things to, I, to be able to offer good media coverage the day of the event and secure this information prior so you're not scrambling. Um, so ID spokespeople ahead of time um, that can speak on the issue, have compelling stories. Confirm the interview on site with the reporter. Um, confirm a setting and a spot. Um, you might, that might change once you get to the spot and if the reporter suggests something different, that's okay, follow their lead. Um, offer guided tours of EVs and exhibitors, that's really good for TV. Um, make sure to get signed release waivers. Um, provide high-res photos and videos in the press release afterwards. Um, and don't forget to thank attending media because it's good to feel like you're having a relationship with media and it's not transactionary. It's always good to follow up. Next slide. Letters and op-eds. Okay, so letters and op-eds are a really good way to uh, attract people to an end event leading up to it um, and to elaborate on the reason that EVs are contributing to a clean transportation future. Uh, they, so letter LTEs are usually around 200 words, um, op-eds are usually under 700. This may vary depending on the outlet. Um, and they both have one to two week lead time. So yeah, make these specific to your city or state. Um, what, like just ask yourself what clean transportation issues are coming up in your area. Um, you know, this is, all these events are happening at a crucial time when there's been targeted opposition to EVs and current administrations rolling back environmental standards. So these events are so important and getting in that message and the positive framing of solution-based um, advocacy is just extremely important. So if you need help with the editing of an op-ed or an LTE or just someone to look it over, um, I'm available to do that. I'll do my best to help. I know there's a lot of people on this call, but... <laughs> Next slide. What if media doesn't show? Um, this isn't the end of the world, it happens. Uh, trust me, there's nothing that feels worse when you get promises of reporters showing up and then no one does. Um, but it's always a helpful reminder to know that you can be your own media outlet, you're your own spokesperson. In this digital age, you have so many platforms to get your message out. Um, so these are just, this slide just covers what you'll need to do day of to then be able to um, carry on the message of how that day went out in case that you're not getting any media coverage, um, mainstream media coverage or local media coverage, but you still want to talk about how awesome your end event went. So this is some social, oh, this is you, Kylie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, so these are just our uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram handles. Um, as well as some hashtags that we encourage you to use. Um, so every year we do hashtag and do and then the year. Um, so you know you can just know to use that uh, anytime, and that's a great way for us to see how much traction National Drive Electric Week is getting on social media. Um, please also be sure to tag us whenever you post about your event. Um, we love to hear about it and retweet it and you know repost it. 
And then also a good note is if you uh, if you put a URL in a post, like so if you put driveelectricweek.org in your post um, on Facebook, uh, you know, you can delete the URL afterward and an image will pop up that still allows people to click through to our website. So which I'll go over in more detail here. All right, um, so I'm just gonna give some background on each of the platforms and how best to use them. Um, so one, the first one's Facebook. Uh, so this is a lot of people's home base. Um, many people are on here every day um, and it does have a diverse age distribution. Uh, although younger people are leaving this platform, um, you know, it's still pretty diverse. Uh, and we do recommend doing two to three posts a week, uh, as well as using uh, images and videos to make your posts more interesting. Um, you know, try not to post every day because that can, you know, you know, when you check Facebook, you don't want to be spammed by posts from anyone. Uh, also, some cool features are live video streaming and photo tagging. Um, and this is just a really good way to promote your events and tag public figures and sponsors. And actually, uh, if you do have sponsors, one benefit you might offer them is, uh, you know, a specific number of posts on Facebook or Twitter uh, for their sponsorship where you, you mention them, you know, thank you for, you know, sponsoring this event or being like a silver level sponsor. All right, uh, so Twitter, 50% of the users are under uh, 34 and many of them are college educated. Uh, so it's a you know, much younger audience on Twitter. Um, there is no limit to how many times you can tweet, um, but you do wanna focus on quality over quantity. Uh, so you shouldn't be, uh, we, we don't recommend tweeting without a picture because um, it's just not a very interesting tweet. Um, also, you, know, you are limited obviously in the amount of characters you have. Uh, so you wanna be really uh, strategic with the hashtags you're using and the text you're using. Um, yeah, you can use hashtags to widen your audience, also live video. Uh, and the bonus here is it's used by reporters and officials. Um, so it's a great way to reach them. If you know reporters on Twitter in your area, you know, maybe tag them about your events um, whenever you post. And another uh, update recently to Twitter is that they are actually starting to punish pages that reuse the same tweet every week. So uh, it's a good idea to reword your tweet. You know, even if you're posting about your event uh, regularly, a couple times a week, um, you don't want to use the exact same tweet because you'll start uh, being punished for that, and you know, not as many people will see it. All right, and so next is Instagram. Um, less than 13% are above the age of 34, and it's used uh, by women and people of color. Uh, so again, it's a younger, really diverse crowd on Instagram. Um, you can post as many times as you want, uh, but again, be uh, judge judicious with your posts. Uh, don't, you know, avoid spamming people. Um, and you can still use hashtags on Instagram. If you want to add a link, uh, you can include that in your post, uh, but I, people aren't able to actually click and, and go to the website. Um, so if you want to include any links to your event page, we recommend doing that in your bio. Um, also, some other features are uh, short videos, uh, stories, uh, you know, also use hashtags to widen your audience. And another thing they have on Instagram is you can ask questions in your stories. Uh, so one thing that we've actually started doing on the Drive Electric Week Instagram is just asking questions about EV-related topics. Um, for example, you know, where do most people charge? And the answer is at home. And so it's just a fun way to keep your followers engaged and hopefully educate them about your events. All right, so some tips for posting. Um, look for iconic visual moments. Uh, you know, one example we have for Drive Electric Week is there's this old man and this uh, little girl in front of looking into the window of an EV and in, in front of them and behind the EV is uh, Washington DC, you know, the Capitol building. And so that's a really iconic picture um, because it's, you know, kind of shows multiple generations and obviously you have a great background. Uh, so if you can have that at your event, it's a great idea. Uh, you can also experiment with live video. So if you can, maybe get someone's EV grin when they're trying out the instant torque for the first time. 
Um, and if you have the budget, uh, it's a good idea to boost Facebook posts um, and tweets to potential supporters outside your following. Uh, this will really help increase your attendance. Uh, also, you can look up VIP handles and you know reporter handles and tag them in advance. Um, so if you know they're coming, you can tag them and maybe thank them for coming. Or even if you just want them to come, tag them so they know about the event. All right, and then tracking. So it's a good idea if you can, uh, at the end of your event to monitor how many likes, shares, retweets and comments, posts about your event had, because um, that's a good indicator you can use uh, that you're improving your uh, promotion efforts every year. All right, uh, and so next uh, we're going to go to our guest speaker, James Reach. Um, good morning and afternoon. Um, I was the city captain of Ventura and Santa Barbara counties in California, which is called the Los Padres chapter of the Sierra Club. I was its transportation chairman and organized several NDEW events that were very, very well attended by both volunteer displaying of cars and attendees. Um, we had a huge amount of media coverage at our events that was uh, largely based on the fact our chapter had for years kept a media list of various contacts to contact. Um, so I urge your um, organization to keep a media list and to cull, cull uh, favor with or cull uh, relationships with the editors of the publications that you have uh, identified. If you look at my bullet points, I think I just talked about some topics that I think are important currently. For example, right now in today's world for EV shows, in my opinion, there's just so much Tesla bias because of just the popularity of Tesla that the other good electric cars are not being promoted as well. So it's very important to have a good diverse mix of all of the EVs at your show. In my case, Last year, I had to close down some Tesla displaying volunteers to save space for other cars to keep a good mix. I noted there was a New York Times article uh, at the end of June of this year where a uh, reporter went with some passengers from EVgo charging network from the Los Angeles area to Las Vegas and back and wrote an article about it that was highly criticized by the EV community. The, the headline of the article was eight hours of driving and five and a half hours of charging to go from Los Angeles and back. And the EV community reacted very negatively to that article because, in, in fact, you can drive a Chevy Bolt in a much shorter amount of time, which is what the car was that the reporter used. And about 80 percent of the uh, social media Twitter uh, feedback to the reporter and the reporter's editors was, you should have driven a Tesla Model 3. I don't think that is the right approach. I think you can, there's there's at least uh, one YouTube video channel called News Coulomb, C-O-U-L-O-M-B, that drove a Chevy Bolt to and from Vegas to demonstrate the shortness of using uh, the charging network within the Chevy Bolt. The main problem with this article was for whatever reason, and I think it was competitive reasons because the passengers in the car were from EVgo as they did not go to the Electrify America charger in Las Vegas and instead went to the level two charger in Prim, Nevada by ChargePoint. So I think there's this importance to, uh, importance to keep in mind there's, that we want to promote all of the electric vehicles and not just Tesla's. Second thing, our chapter as, a, as an organization decided not to accept corporate sponsorships in exchange for putting their logos in the social media, on the websites, and on our flyers. So for at least our, our decision was to not do that. There's a book by Naomi Klein called No Logos that I think you've probably heard of. Uh, it's about this thing where you trade your corporate, lo corporate logos for for uh, sponsorships, we thought it was not a good idea. And so we have chosen not to do that in everything we do. We think it's really important to use paper flyers and posters. We've printed large numbers of them and posted them and distributed them for all of our events. 
The reason being, first of all, your volunteers end up engaging with the community as they go around asking the local businesses to put them up in their windows and to hand them out during on the days of the event. Secondly, it's just people can take it with them, but it's basically a way to get around in the community and promote the event. So there's this trend because of solid waste management to not do paper. Well, it's very important, in my opinion, to continue to do paper flyers and posters distribution. Uh, basic EV ownership and use in education. It's very important that you know what the, uh, because the public generally doesn't know uh, some very basic things. It was mentioned earlier that the model where you charge at home for the most part doesn't seem to be understood by the public. So for example, um, I saw this at a, a local air pollution control district meeting and then also Vice President Biden, uh, who's running as a Democratic nominee for president, mentions putting in 500,000 EV charging stations throughout the country. And uh, that was at my local air pollution control district, the, the commissioners, can we put in charging stations all across our county? And Another commissioner said most of the public charges at home and they, they, they have enough charge from their daily commute that they really don't need to charge that much. So the, the, these basic things about maintenance and other things is just need, the public needs to be aware of that. And so you need to be able to inform when you engage with the media, make sure to answer every question they have. Be prepared with your own talking points because a lot of times the reporters don't actually know what questions to ask. So you, you might have to drive the discussion yourselves by providing some sort of uh, meat or some sort of, uh, I guess you would call it, some sort of thing that would lead the reporter on to ask you a question that you're, I guess it would be called a softball uh, thing to lead the reporter around. So make sure that you are very, very well, well repaired with everything you're about to say. For example, there's very fine points and distinctions on the uh, the uh, rebate programs and, and benefits that you get for purchasing an EV car. For example, in, the, in California, you may not get any money at all depending on your income. You may get $2,500. You may get $4,500. And you may get some number in between depending on what car you buy and what your income level is. You need to know these things to answer the questions to the reporters. My experience is that to encourage EV use and adoption, the environmental benefits of owning and using a vehicle are not as important as the economic benefits. The big sell to the majority of the public is to explain to them how much cheaper it is to own and operate the vehicle. The cost of electricity per mile is so much, it's about four times cheaper than the cost of gasoline per mile. And then also the fact that you are not doing any sort of maintenance like oil changes or cylinder or oil changes or timing belt advancements or fuel injector cleanings, all of the aftermarket servicing and interval servicing is so much cheaper with an EV than with a regular uh, internal combustion engine car. Uh, I think that is the winning argument. I think a distant second, but second for sure is the green environmental aspects of owning the car, the fact that it has no tailpipe at all and provide zero tailpipe emissions. So, so safety, all of these EVs have a much better safety record than other cars because of the fact that there's no engine in the under the hood. There's a, this larger distance of the crumple zone on, an, on a front end collision and other reasons why all of the EVs have much better safety uh, records than internal combustion cars. And then performance, all the EVs have much better performance because the torque and acceleration are so much better. Uh, at my shows, I had several uh, dignitaries and elected officials come. Um, that included a US congressman, county supervisors, state representatives, and, and city council people. I, I think it's important to try to have some sort of a reason for them to all come at the same time so you can get a good photo op of all of them together. So we had like a little educational seminar that was really just to give one particular time for all of them to come at the same time. If that can't work, you can, that's also good, but it would be good to have them all there at the same time. 
I, I want to stress the importance of traditional media. There seems to be this bias or this, this trend towards talking about social media, but, but newspapers, radio and television are very important. We had, uh, I, I would say there's three types of articles, maybe four types of articles. There's the calendar listings, advanced news articles, live stand-up uh, shots from television and radio during the show, and then after articles. So four different things. The live news television that we had was then packaged into local news that was broadcast at 5, 6, 11, 6 a.m. and 7 a.m. the next day. Um, radio, I was on drive time radio a, a few days before with the live call-in show and then uh, I did a recorded show that was uh, actually broadcast during our event where I, I would say, come on down, you know, the reporter, we knew it was going to be broadcast during the event, but it was recorded in advance. And then the newspapers uh, seem to work because they also have uh, websites where people can read them online and the print edition. Uh, so those are some of the basic points I want to talk about. I, the last thing about local venue issues, uh, some of our venue did not have electric vehicle charging and we were able to convince local officials to put in an EV charging stations in the venue just because they hosted the shows so many times. Um, the other well, issue is not really an issue. There's something to do with a local issue with another one of my venues. So th that's basically what I want to talk about. All right, yeah, thank you so much. Have there any questions? Yes? Oh yeah, no, I just said thank you so much. And yeah, we'll definitely have questions at the end. Um, I definitely have one for you at the end as well. So, um, mm -hmm. all right. Uh, so next we're gonna move, uh, thank you so much, James. Um, so next we're gonna move on to our, our next guest speaker, Andrew Clark um, from Concordia, Kansas. Uh, go ahead, Andrew. Yeah, hi, uh, my name is Andrew Clark. Um, I'm a instructor at the local community college. Um, I actually, uh, I'm a renewable energy instructor, and uh, I have, uh, well, I've been basically my my entire adult life, I've been either working in uh, energy or renewable. Um, I uh, went to college uh, here at Cloud County Community College in their wind program and was a wind, in, wind energy student uh, that got on a job and traveled the, kind of traveled the country a lot of time in California in the, in the West Coast uh, where I got to see a lot of solar and wind uh, and uh, electric car was uh, pretty early in the stages but I did drive multiple Teslas after they first came out and kind of just fell in love. Um, I, nice uh, and you said that Sorry, Andrew, you said that your event is one of the, the or so an EV is a rare site in Kansas, and so that's kind of the main benefit you've seen with your event. Yeah, so so I, I have the only uh, drive national drive electric event in the entire central Kansas area. Um, I probably, it's probably the only one for 150 to 300 miles, so somewhere 250. Do you find uh, that that helps you get case. media coverage? I'm just curious. Uh, yeah. It's it's pretty easy to get media coverage around because you know, I am with the college and I am I do have connections with that. So we do have the local media, um, even the Salina, Salina Journal is one of the larger ones that covers the entire state, and uh, they they usually cover it. Uh, I don't know that I've had them actually there, but they usually cover it after the fact. So I think that's going to be one of my goals this this year is to uh, get them at the event and see if I can get them to, to spend a day with us doing some, maybe even some some uh, video or some uh, TV interviews. But, Very um, nice. And did, did I, you I, reach out to them or, or they reached out to you? The local media? Mm -hmm. uh, usually we post it on the the calendar at the school and and they have the calendar they're they're part of the calendar so they just uh, start asking questions and put it on there they don't they don't really have a lot to cover around here there's not a lot going on in the rural in rural kansas so uh they do usually take 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 care of that part but uh, we do 
um, schedule interview times and that kind of stuff with them uh, to get it to get it kind of the ball rolls. And, and so you, you said uh, so. Have you actually done the interviews? How how was that experience? If uh, yeah, I've done I've done probably an interview at every every one of the events we did the uh, last year's National Drive Electric, and then we had the um, the the Earth Day Drive event this spring, and then now we're gonna have this one this year. So it'll be the third, uh, second annual National Drive and the first uh, Drive Electric Earth Day event. And uh, they they loved it. They they get we get a, a Tesla that comes down and they'll give us a ride. And uh, you know obviously that's the uh, the accelerations unlike most vehicles we drive around here. So they get a, they get a kick out of it. And when you were uh, participating in the interview, was there anything that surprised you or uh, kind of a, a challenge that you weren't expecting from a reporter? Um, not, not really. Uh, just, just basically the, you know, the amount of people that don't know about electrics. That's that's kind of what surprises me. How much, how much they don't know. Um, you know, but it, you know, that's that's kind of the norm with a, with an EV, an early adopter. You know, you kind of spend a lot of time explaining explaining the benefits and explaining what's so good about the car nice right um well do you have anything else uh to add about your event here or um uh, well i guess the the main the main part is that yeah we are we like like they said having a charger at the event is it's kind of one of those things that you really need to have to show people and that's actually something we're working on. We we've been trying to get a, a we've been writing grants to uh, get a, a DC fast charger um, to actually put up at the college next to where we host the event, uh, so that in the future we can charge the cars and ha- offer a benefit to the guys coming down to show make the do the shows. Um, we think this is kind of going to be a, a normal thing for us, and we'd like we like to keep it going so we really uh, uh we really think the the charger at the event is a you know, pretty important key uh, to that awesome well thank you so much um all right so yeah thank you so much for your time and we're gonna move on to our next guest speaker and again all of our guest speakers will be available at the end um to chip in on any of the questions uh, you get, the audience has okay uh and next we have anna cullen I go ahead, Anna. Yeah. All right. Well, so why don't we move over to the first slide? That's just boring stuff. <laughs> okay. So I want to keep it pretty short so we can get get to questions. Um, but I did want to just give a few things uh, that I have learned about dealing uh, with media, which is a big part of uh, what I do on a day to day basis. Um, my event is a little different than a traditional. Uh, National Drive Electric Week of, uh, event, I uh, organize a uh, EV caravan. Um, so we do a 34 mile uh, EV caravan from downtown Atlanta um, to a location that's a free uh, sustainability, essentially a festival every year, just to give you an idea of the event that, that I organize. Um, and then I participate in other Atlanta events um, and support them through my organization. So a few things I want think is important is uh, First thing is to do your homework. Uh, when dealing with the media, quality uh, is much more important than, than quantity. An email blast to every reporter whose email you've ever gotten is not going to do the trick. Why are you reaching out to this reporter? What are you trying to get from them? If I think about just my local public radio station, I can think that there is a can, there's a there's a traffic guy. There's a guy who talks. In addition to just the traffic guy, there's a he, I think he's called the congestion dude. Uh, so there's the congestion dude. He might be interested to think about how um, EVs and their fuel con, fuel use might uh, impact uh, the the air quality in Atlanta. There's also somebody who focuses on sustainability. They might be interested in that. There's a car guy um, who might be interested in a different component. Each of these reporters care about something different, and I would pitch them totally different. So when you're t- pitching to reporters, do your homework. Why do they care about your event? Um, 
And then you want to do that individual, individual outreach. And you want to craft a pitch that you would want to receive. A lot of our events happen on the weekend. So you're asking a reporter to come out on a weekend, which is a big ask. So think about an, a pitch. Think, I like to think about um, maybe a bespoke event, you know, a, a, a curated experience that somebody would really want to participate in. You know, invite them for a ride along experience in if you've got a driver that's got you know, the new that that new um, Porsche, you know, the, the, I don't know what it's called, the, the Taycan, I can never, yeah, I see the word, I can never pronounce it. But if you've got a driver with a really unique um, EV that you know is coming, get with that driver and see if they'd be willing to offer a ride in that car to a reporter, you know, and offer that experience. Give um, these reporters something, a hook that's more than just come to my event and interview some people who drive an electric vehicle. They've already done that story. So really think about what you can offer them that would get them to that event, particularly on a weekend. Uh, if you can't find their email, use social media. A lot of them, a lot of these reporters, uh, as I think Kylie mentioned, they're on social media. They are on Twitter. And a lot of reporters are actually using Twitter as a primary way where they're receiving tips, they're receiving uh, leads. Um, it's important to know the difference between DMs and tweeting publicly. Uh, rep many reporters will have their DM features turned on. DM meaning direct message, meaning that you can, instead of just sending them a public message saying, hey, come to my event, which can sometimes get ignored, you can send them a private message which doesn't have a character limit where you can actually send a more traditional pitch. Um, I'd still keep it a little bit shorter than a traditional media pitch since it is on Twitter, but you can reach out to them through the Twitter DM function. Um, so use it, reach out to them on social media. Uh, so that's that's how I would approach uh, earned media. So next slide, please. And then the other things um, I wanted to mention is to use compelling graphics. We talked about high-res photos. In addition to those high-res photos, you know, up the ante. Take that high-res photo, put a color block next to it, and then write in a real pretty font, National Drive Electric Week 2018, you know, can't wait to see you 2019 or 2019, here we come. Make really compelling graphics to sell your event. Send them to reporters, put them out on social media, put them out on your flyers. You know, set those community flyers that were mentioned um, by one of the earlier speakers, those are great. The images that are on those flyers are really important and you don't have to be a graphic designer. I have zero creative skills, um, but tools, I put up uh, Canva. It is a free tool and you don't have to upgrade to the, uh, the pro version, uh, which is only, I think, $9 a month, which, which I pay for, um, but you don't have to upgrade to the, uh, the paid version to have a really solid tool that'll make you look like a professional graphic designer, to have a really compelling image uh, that you can use on social media for your f printable flyers and for your media pitches. And I actually, I do, um, I, I don't want, to, I'm not in any way, shape or form saying that traditional media is any less valuable because I primarily work in traditional media, but I do think that we should expand our definition of media. I think it's important to think about who are we trying to reach and then to find the media that reaches that audience. So our traditional media is going to reach a lot of our EV drivers, but other kinds of media opportunities do exist and we shouldn't leave them on the table. So two media opportunities I wanted to put out to the group to just think about. Um, one is listservs that curate activities. A lot of us are posting our events on community bulletin boards online. Um, those already exist, but uh, there's a lot of more curated event boards. Um, I know I get one in Atlanta that's called, it's called the in Unstoppable A. Uh, I love it. It's really, it's, it's a fun email list of what's going on in Atlanta right now. And it tells me some events coming up in the weekend. They aren't just going to show every single event coming up in Atlanta because there are too many. If I want them to talk about my event, I've got to pitch it to them. I've got to treat it like a pitch. Um, so I would look for where are, if you're looking to expand your event and you want to bring in new people, 
uh, look at where are these curated listservs, email lists that people are using and they're getting into their emails every single week. And then the other definition of media I want you to consider is influencers. And I know that sounds stupid and it may sound silly, but it's a term I want you to take a little seriously. If you don't know who the influencers are, ask your interns, ask your nieces and nephews, ask your kids. Uh, they are on YouTube, they are on Instagram, they live in your community, they're, on, they're in your state. Um, they wanna come to your event. They wanna come to your event, they wanna bring a camera, they wanna post pictures, they wanna share what you're doing. Uh, they're, they are Tesla enthusiasts, they are EV enthusiasts, they are sustainability enthusiasts, and they want to participate. You've just gotta ask, and they have thousands of followers and they're real media. Um, so I would not overlook them. You just gotta ask the right people who they are. Um, so I guarantee somebody that you know can help you uh, find who they are. And you reach them through usually the um, emails if they're posted, uh, YouTube channels usually have emails posted. And then if they're living on in the Instagram side, there's a direct message feature. And then the last thing I wanted to mention was to create a, a folder with pitch languages, images, all these great tools that you are developing, make it easy for your whole team to use them. Your whole team, you're gonna have uh, volunteers and you're gonna have team members. They're all gonna want be talking to reporters and they're gonna be and make having these interactions, make it easy for people to help you. I mentioned that this is all about quality and about hard work. This is about research um, and, it, and what, I would rather have one quality story over people sharing press releases all day long. Uh, so I would make it easy for people to help you out so that you can send as many of these as possible. So put all the weird work you're doing, make it shareable and let your team help you. That's what I got. Thank you so much, that was great. Um, and so next we're gonna move to Q and A. Uh, you can see the e uh, both my email and Larissa's email there. Um, feel free to email us with any questions that we don't cover here. Um, and so let me pull up in the question window, to get started. Um, so uh, what exactly is a pitch call? Um, so I don't know if uh, Larissa or Anna, uh, if either of you want to take a stab at that. Anna, do you want to go for it? A pitch call? Yeah. I guess I don't do many pitch calls. I don't call people. I find that reporters, mm -hmm. and does I have a pre-established relationship, um, they don't pick up the phone. It's yeah, no, that's fair. Yeah, a pitch call is, I think in the side that I had a pitch call would be like calling the morning of like a t like a TV desk. Um, but it 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 a good asterisk to put on that is that like from it from the database that I'm working off of, sometimes reporters like exclusively say do not call us, email us. So I think there is a distinction there um, to where you might not be wanting to call your reporters unless you have a pre-existing relationship. Got it, thank you. Um, let's see. Oh, and I had one thing, Kylie, earlier mm -hmm. when, um, I was supposed to share the document on a good interview. I actually don't have an option to share with everyone on the call. All I see is sending chat to like the panelists. So I don't know if you wanted to drop that in because I don't think that everyone got that, um, the interview tips link. Got it. So uh, yeah, it, in that case, um, we can send it. We'll be sending an email blast. I'll be sending an email to everyone on the webinar and registered for the webinar. And we'll send that link out to you guys. Um, also, if you visit the media page on the Drive Electric Week resources page, um, you'll find templates for like a media alert uh, and also a link to how to do, do an interview successfully. Um, so it's a good, also a good resource. Okay, great. I just wanted to flag that because I was like, I can't find how to share this link with everybody for my options. Yeah, no problem. And then we actually have a question for James Reach. Um, so what happens when Tesla is the only EV manufacturer to respond to invites to participate? Um, can you suggest a surefire way to bring awareness uh, to dealerships who 
of other other vehicles um, who aren't interested. Um, you uh, first of all, you should have a several volunteer owners displaying who are not dealers. We had about 60 volunteer owners at one of my two last events and about 35 at the other of my two last events because I did two in the same I do two in the same season. Um, but for dealers, you just have to keep calling and talking to the general manager. It's an opportunity for them to display their car and bring a salesman. Uh, so if Tesla's the only uh, dealer coming, please try to get people in the community to come who are owners. Uh, I did at one point look at used car, at cartrader.com, I believe it was, or one of those used car sites to see if someone who had a used car for sale, you could you can screen by electric vehicle and then see if anyone wanted to just come and display their used car for sale. I did do that once, it never actually occurred, but I had that as an idea because I wanted to get a, a Ford Focus electric at a certain show because it's one of, one of the EVs that was there and it was the one that was not coming to my show. So at a, as a last resort, I looked for a used Ford Focus electric in like autotrader.com and tried to invite that selling used car owner to come and display. Um, Got it. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, that's, I, I didn't even think about that. Um, all right. And then switching back to media. Um, so uh, we do have a tip from someone which uh, essentially they're just saying, you know, make it easy. Um, make it easy for the media. So whenever you send them the pitch or uh, an email, anything, um, you know, write out about the event as much as you can and just think from their perspective if they have to write a story about this or if they have to pass this on to anyone and tell people what this is. You know, you want to do your best to make it easy for the reporter to know what your event is and to pitch it to their boss to cover, if that's the case. Uh, and then one question is, do you provide information for the media or can I create the information uh, for the media? And the answer is uh, each city captain can create their own information about their event. Uh, we provide you know, some templates you can use and obviously anything on our website about the benefits of EVs, you can copy paste that into your pitch if that's helpful. Um, but generally each event is so different that we rely on you guys to, to really craft the message. All right. And okay, I think that's it. Uh, yeah, the only other uh, tip. I, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, it's really important to EV adoption that we allow the manufacturers to sell their cars. And right now, what I see is one of the biggest problems is Tesla. It is not legal for them to sell their vehicles in about 15 states. And four of those states, South Carolina, Alabama, Michigan, and New Mexico, they can't even open a service center, even if you did get a Tesla online or through some purchase of at online, you still can't get it serviced in your state. I think that's one of the biggest threats to EV adoption is are these dealer franchise laws that make it illegal for the automakers to sell their cars. Yeah. Um, and Mm -hmm. I was going to say, James, it actually brings up a good point that, that that actually could be a really good media hook. You know, if you're trying to get the media involved in your event is uh, point out the fact that Teslas aren't allowed to be sold and people can come here to your event to see them and take rides in them yes. um, when they can't actually buy them in that state. So. Right. Yeah. All right. Um, so I think that that's it for today. Thank you everyone for joining and thank you so much to our guest speakers. We have lots of different voices and lots of great tips. All right. Have a great day, thank everyone. You. Thank you. Bye everybody. Bye.